the reality is people are what make the difference. And when I met way back when Steve and Unity, oh my goodness, um, I just knew they were going to make a difference. And they had this vision, which I thought was crazy at the time. And they talked about these moonshots and whatnot. And they have systematically put a foundation in place and then have been building up these moonshots. And I've, I've watched them bring incredible people to each of these moonshots. Really high quality, credible people that what a privilege it is to be amongst them. Sue Siegel, thank you so much for joining me today for this episode on Startup Health. Um, you've had an amazing career as the head of GE Ventures and the chief innovation officer at uh, GE. And now you're part of Startup Health's impact board. So I wanted to get you on a call and just learn about your journey, learn about where your emphasis is now. And I'm just excited to have this conversation. Well, thank you, Logan. You're so good to actually make the time to spend uh, actually learning about me. And, you know, I, I have to say, joining the impact board when, when um, Unity and when Steve invited me to do so, I was like, okay, what does that mean? What are all the responsibilities? But I knew that I would do this because I have supported them since they started. <laughs> Actually, since when they were an academy and they had this incredible vision of this army of entrepreneurs tackling the types of problems, big problems that we have in the healthcare arena. So I'm just delighted to actually be on this journey with them. Now, I mentioned your, your work with General Electric um, in different aspects. Uh, what, what, what is your current title? What are you currently working on? <laughs> yes, thank you. So, uh, you know, GE and GE Ventures um, was actually after 30 some years being in the workforce. So amongst that activity that I did with General Electric, I was also head of Affymetrics, which was a startup company way back when, which was one of the companies that really helped drive the genomics industry. Um, and then I was part of a number of different companies, including Biorad and Amersham and um, DuPont. So I've had a pretty great level of experiences uh, learning along the way with regards to the corporate world and then went into ventures. I was a general partner in the venture world here in Silicon Valley at a firm here in Silicon Valley and then went into GE, GE after that to, to start GE Ventures. Um, my current title is that I'm a board director currently at a number of different public companies. I serve on the board of Illumina. I serve on the board of Align Technologies, which makes the Invisalign um, technologies. Nice. Yeah. And I'm also on the board of Nevro, um, which is a company that uh, does neuromodulation for pain relief. Um, and in addition to that, I serve on the board of Kaiser Family Foundation. I am the chairman of The Engine, which is an incubator accelerator out of MIT. And then I'm also on the board of ba Baker Bioingenuity Hub. I teach at MIT at the Martin Center for Entrepreneurship at Sloan. And I do a lot of other advisory and um, uh, mentorship work. So Sue, I keep myself busy. <laughs> Sue, is there anything you don't do? Uh, do you make time for sleep? <laughs> to our previous conversation, uh, sleep is something that is helped by sleep stories on calm. That's right. Right? <laughs> what do you feel like has been, uh, that's a very varied career, uh, although I, I know there are very specific themes that have carried you through, but what do you feel like has been a real through line for that professional narrative? Yeah, I'd say there's two things that have been a uh, real through line. Um, one is the pursuit and absolute love of innovation. And the second one is engaged leadership, focusing on developing people, helping them reach their potential. That has been an extraordinary joy. Both of those bring me incredible joy. Innovation, I have learned in so many different aspects, particularly in the world of life sciences and healthcare, is something that takes both patience, a bit of risk taking, and the understanding a bit of impatient patience. And what do I mean by that? 
you have to know that it takes a long time for something novel, innovative, to actually become standard of care in medicine. The going knowledge around that is somewhere around 17 to 20 years. Um, and we've the entrepreneurs and us all say, we can make that shorter. Mm. And what you learn is, yes, you can, thank goodness for entrepreneurs, but in addition to that, you have to understand that there is there are systems, there are regulatory <laughs> requirements, et cetera, that you must also learn along the way. And that's something that entrepreneurs, the really, really good ones, understand from the very beginning and know how to bring people along with them that truly understand what all of that means. Yeah. The, the second line I would say to you um, is really around leadership and mentorship. Helping people reach their full potential, being involved in that in whatever way one can be has brought me more joy than I can possibly, you know, actually describe. Watching them grow through the toughest problems, helping think through potential solutions and watching them pick a solution and then go after it and then be successful. Oh my goodness. That's that, that to me is, um, I just love doing that. And so helping entrepreneurs do that is um, it, it, it's just a real joy. Let's let's drill down into that a little bit, because a lot of our audience are entrepreneurs and founders and would like to be better managers and mentors. So what makes a great mentor? Um, and I'm not trying to claim that I'm a great mentor. So please let me just put that out there. But here's my perspectives that I will share. What, after having, <laughs> what have I learned over time? I will say the following. A great mentor is one that understands how to listen. Listen carefully to what the person that they have the privilege to actually be helping in whatever way. Understand what their issues are. And sometimes they're hard to discern because there's so many things coming at an entrepreneur at any one time. So listening carefully, helping them discern and prioritize what the issues are for their both personal growth and their company growth is I think a really good trait of a mentor. A, a second thing I would say is good partners will tell the truth, mm. will say things to the recipient, the mentee, if you'd like, that a lot of people won't tell them, particularly if they're CEOs and founders, people will wanna tell them what they think they wanna hear. Mm. A true partner will say, you know, I see it this way. Maybe you can consider this and be able to give them a little bit of perspective with regards to the impact they might be having on somebody else, how their decisions are affecting a system, how they're positioning themselves in front of an industry, how their presence is being felt in front of their board. All of those different aspects of being an entrepreneur particularly when they're fundraising, et cetera, a good mentor will listen carefully and be willing to tell the truth. Mm, that's good. I love that. Something I like to dig into with our impact board is really what does it actually take in the real world to affect change in health? I know over your whole career, you've been thinking about, okay, how can we improve health for these various populations? And there's just, there's a lot of hype in the industry. There's a lot of talk. There's a lot of ideas that go nowhere. And over the course of your career, I'm sure you've come to realize, okay, what is going to have impact and what is going to uh, result in a lot of red tape and spinning of wheels. So when you think about that landscape, uh, what do you feel like you've learned about the kinds of innovations that really move the needle in health? Well, let me just say one thing on, on that. And that is, I think healthcare is a field where true impact takes a while, mm. where, as I mentioned previously, getting it to a standard of care takes a while. So knowing that, particularly something so very, very novel, I've, I, I've had the privilege of actually participating in a whole new industry being created, which was the world of genomics. And I'll use that as an example. Mm. So when the human genome was being sequenced, first ones back in the late 1980s, early 1990s, and then of course the first draft of it in the 2000s, what were we gonna do with it? This was an uncharted territory. We didn't know anything really about our genome. And yet we thought immediately it was gonna cure disease because here we were, we were gonna get to know our molecular basis of what we were all about. And look now, 
We're in 2022 and there's been a plethora of new diagnostics and yes, some therapeutics that could have come out of it. And the world of precision health and personalized medicine are now really becoming much more reality, but it has taken that long. It is a, a 20 year cycle and we've only just begun. Mm. So for something so new, like these moonshot entrepreneurs are attacking, if they are inventing something, if it's a new molecule, if it's a new diagnostic, if it's a new technology, there is some time and investment in order to make it happen. And it it's a village, as has been said, and you have to bring convergent expertise to the table, be it in the world of not only development, but also regulatory, the policy world, making sure you understand what the policies are in healthcare. Reimbursement strategies from the very beginning are very important. In fact, a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs that I've had the privilege of, of you know working with think about reimbursement as like series B type of discussion. And mm -hmm. the reality is I encourage them to think about what could be their strategy in series A? How will they get the right kind of people to help them think through what a reimbursement strategy is? Because people want to know, investors want to know, how are you gonna go about attacking this? So it takes a village to actually bring these to bear. Yeah, you're sort of getting to my next question, which is that you're a very busy person and, and you could be involved in any initiative um, why join the Startup Health Impact Board and support this global army of entrepreneurs? Well, thank you for that question because um, to me, it always comes down to people. And I say this all the time. I say it to my kids. I say it to folks that I work with because the reality is people are what make the difference. And when I met way back when Steve and Unity, oh my goodness, um, I just knew they were going to make a difference. And they had this vision, which I thought was crazy at the time. And they talked about these moonshots and whatnot. Um, and I thought, well, how are they going to make this army of entrepreneurs actually come together to drive it? And they have systematically put a foundation in place and then have been building up these moonshots. You know, and I counsel them, start with the one moonshot first and understand and learn from it and then expand. And um, they've been doing that. And I've, I've watched them bring incredible people to each of these moonshots, really high quality, credible people that what a privilege it is to be amongst them yeah. um, and, and being able to participate. That's great. What do you hope that this army of entrepreneurs tackles next? Is there an area of health innovation where you feel like there's either a particular gap in innovation or where you see great opportunity? Well, let's be clear. You know, that's like asking who's your favorite kid. Um, and, and the reality is the reason why they pick them is they're all very, very important. Mm -hmm. If I had to say there is an area of extraordinary need, mm -hmm. it is the world of mental health and Alzheimer's in particular, with the aging population and demographics that we have and the incidence increasing, prevalence increasing like we've never seen before, yet there's a paucity of true R&D dollars or commercialization possibilities because of the carcass of failures that we've had before us in such a difficult field. So the fact that we're bringing entrepreneurs to this, innovations, which you know they so believe in, we need that kind of portfolio of risk-taking, very innovative ideas to stand a chance against this incredible disease. So I'm just very, very thankful that you know the startup health crew, Steve and Unity, have really picked it as as an area of focus. Yeah, you have the benefit of a you know a real global view, and you've been in these different positions um for for many years a lot of our entrepreneurs are really in the weeds week to week they're fundraising they it can be very challenging to look at the uh public markets and look at investment trends on a quarterly basis i wonder what your words of wisdom would be to some of them who are having trouble thinking long term and kind of you know pulling back from the crisis of the week 
Yeah, and, and I have to say, I've been there. I understand it, having run <laughs> companies and different, you know, divisions and whatnot. And you are just buried in making sure you can get through the week in terms of the the the, the problem du jour. But I'd say one of the things that you should welcome is finding a couple of partners that you can entrust in to help them think through the longer term with you on a routine basis and invite them over a cup of coffee and just spend time saying, what are you seeing in the industry? What trends do you think I should be really aware of? What trends in other industries do you think are gonna pervade mine? As I think about my company, how do I think of how it's gonna fit in the universe in terms of either healthcare delivery or a technology that could potentially be very beneficial. And what am I not thinking about? Because I am deep down trying to do what I need to do to get my week done, my goals done. Can you help me think through those? Just being very open with a couple of partners that you know, that's what they do. And by the way, a lot of venture capitalists, that's what they do all the time. Mm. Find those that want to partner with you to help you think about that over time. Yeah. Is that how you stay fresh? I mean, I'm, I'm sure that you're always dealing with uh, challenges <laughs> propping up and fires, but you have to kind of keep that fresh perspective. How do you make sure you stay grounded? Honestly, the fresh perspective is something that you've just got to do all the time. I tend, I'm a, a news hound. I, I read as much as I possibly can. Anything from technology review to modern healthcare to you know, futurism, whatever it might be to just sort of keep me up to speed with regards to some of the most current trends. But I also attend conferences. I try to, particularly with, with um, Zoom and some of the virtual things, you can do much more of that. I also try to keep in touch, like I had just mentioned, with folks that have a pulse on what's going on. And I just ask them, what's going on? What do you see? And of course, because I'm involved with the engine and I'm involved with Baker by Ingenuity, have both entrepreneurial efforts and startup health, it gives me a little bit of a window um, into the world of innovation, into the world of new trends, which I have found, um, I just drink it up because it's just so useful to, to see what might be coming. And boy, is there a lot of new stuff coming. I love it. I love it, Sue. Well, that's a nice note to end on. Sue Siegel, uh, we are proud to have you on our uh, Startup Health Impact Board. You've been a supporter from the beginning, and um, you've had an amazing career. I know you're going to speak wisdom into uh, whatever comes next at this organization and in your own. So, uh, so it's exciting to get to to hear your thoughts today. Well, you're kind to say that, and it is my pleasure and my privilege to be able to actually be a partner in startup health. So thank you. All right. Take care. Be well. A quick word about this show in case you're new around here. At Startup Health, we believe in broadcasting the stories of health moonshot progress, the stories of the most forward-thinking entrepreneurs in health. If you want more of this good news about healthcare's problem solvers, make sure that you subscribe to our channel, hit that notification button, and follow us on social media at Startup Health.